In this video, we're going to introduce the fundamentals of an entirely new section of the course, looking at integration, which will turn out to be the opposite of what we've done so far with differentiation. We're going to start off with a relatively intuitive exploration of the relationship between distance and velocity. We've seen already that if we've measured the distance as a function of time, then the velocity is the derivative of the position. We already stated that before. Velocity is the time derivative of the position function. We're now going to ask the question, what if we begin with the graph of the velocity and are trying to work our way backwards towards position? How can we determine how far we've traveled? Most importantly, to get started, we're interested in how we would see velocity going into position change on a graph. We know that velocity is the slope on the position graph. What we're asking now is, where do we find position on a velocity graph? Let's take a simple case with constant velocity. We draw some axes, and we have time on one axis, and we're going to use a constant velocity. So let's put units on here to make it even more intuitive. We have meters per second for velocity, time in seconds. And if we have a constant velocity, let's say 4 meters per second, a constant velocity would simply be a horizontal line for the velocity at all time. However, we also know how to calculate the distance when the velocity is constant. Distance traveled is going to be velocity times time. So imagine we travel for, let's say, 8 seconds. We can do the side calculation that the distance is going to equal 4 meters per second times the 8 seconds, and we know that that's going to be 32 meters as a distance traveled. But our question is, where do we see that in this graph? Well, we have 8 squares this way, 4 squares high. Each square is 1 meter per second times seconds, or 1 meter of distance traveled. And so this area represents exactly the same quantity as this 32. It's our 8 seconds this way, and our 4 meters per second vertically the product being the area enclosed in that rectangle. That is a critical observation for what we're going to do next. If we have the velocity against time and we want to talk about distances, we're going to see that as areas. Having looked at that constant velocity scenario and recognizing how we can get distance traveled out of that, our next question is how would we move from a velocity against time graph, but if we had a changing velocity? Well, in some sense, the question hasn't changed. We still have time in this axis and meters per second or velocity on this axis. If we talk about the area under this graph, that would capture the same velocity times time idea that we're aiming for. Now that's going to turn out to be a real challenge. How do we get to this area when we have this non-constant function going on? Our velocity is changing every time. For the moment anyway, we won't be able to calculate an exact distance traveled if our velocity is changing, but we can maybe estimate it, and that's going to be the thrust of the next little bit. If we talk about a velocity that's not changing too quickly, so imagine a velocity that's almost constant, maybe just increasing a little bit, well what we could do is pretend, for a brief moment, that the velocity is constant, and use an area under the graph of this rectangle, which we can actually get, versus the area under this curve, which we don't know how to compute yet. And if we did that over and over and over again, what we'd start to see is a pretty good approximation to the area under the curve. And that would give us a way to estimate distance traveled on a velocity against time graph. So the key insight is when a velocity is changing and we want to find the distance traveled, we'll need the area underneath the curve of the velocity against time. We're not going to be able to get that exactly yet, but we can certainly get a good approximation by building shapes that we know the area of underneath the graph and getting a good estimate of that area. Over the next few videos, we'll reinforce that idea.